my primary two. This is our new novel that we're going to be looking at. So before Christmas, we had the Christmas Saurus, which you all thoroughly enjoyed. Um, so I thought I'd start another one for us as well. Okay, so this one is called, the title is Codename Bananas, and the author is David Williams. Um, the illustrator for this book is a man called Tony Ross, and they quite often work in partnership. Okay, the first thing I want you to do is to make a prediction. Okay, so I'd like you to look at the title and look at the illustration clearly. Looking at all the detail down here. What are they doing? Is it day? Is it night? Where are they? What are the characters? Think about what they're doing and the title. Has that got any clues? Code Name Bananas. Okay, pause this video and make a prediction. Tell the person next to you. Three, two, one, pause. Okay, boys and girls, so you've had your prediction. Let's go and move on. So, some of these illustrations as we go might give you some other ideas as well. For your prediction. If I open up inside... This is just some thank yous. The author, David Williams, has just put on here some thank yous to the people who have either helped him write this or helped him come up with ideas or various ways they, they could have possibly have helped him to uh, finish this book. Okay. Oh, look at the details here in the illustrations. Okay. London. December 1940, Second World War. And it says here it's classified. Britain has been in a bitter way war with Nazi Germany for over a year. It is the height of the Blitz and Nazi bombs rain down on the city. The people of London live in fear, as do the animals of the city, particularly those in London Zoo. The characters in our adventure are, we've got Eric. This short, shy 11 year old boy has sticky out ears and wears glasses with one of the lenses cracked. Sadly, like many children of the time, Eric has lost both his parents in the war. Now an orphan, he is withdrawn and sad most of the time. The only thing that makes the boy happy is visiting London Zoo. There he has formed a very special friendship with a huge furry friend. More of her in a moment. Here is Uncle Sid. Sid is Eric's great uncle and the oldest keeper at London Zoo. He has worked there for longer than anyone can remember, including him. Like many men at the outbreak of the First World War, he enlisted to become a soldier. However, on his very first day on the battlefields of France, he stepped on an enemy mine and lost both his legs. Nowadays, Sid gets about an, on tin legs, but nothing can dampen his light and spirits, his fighting spirits. The zookeeper would give anything to be able to battle the Nazis and prove himself to be a hero once and for all. That's two characters we're learning about here. Let's see if we can find out about some more. Here's Grandma. Eric's grandmother is a fearsome character. She dresses from head to toe in black. Black shoes, black coat, a black pillbox hat. The deaf old lady never goes anywhere without her ear trumpet, which helps her to hear. This doubles as a weapon to bash folks out of her way. When Eric became an orphan, she took the boy in to live with her. As much as he loves his grandmother, Eric finds it hard to be around her as she's so very strict. Here's Bessie. Bessie is a larger than life lady, bursting with love and laughter. She works as a doctor in a military hospital in London where day and night she tends to the wounded soldiers. Bassie and Sid are next door neighbours. 
Living side by side in a row of tiny terraced houses, a bomb blast tore a hole in the fence that divides their back gardens, so Bessie can pop round to see Sid at any time of the day or night. Here is Nina, the air raid warden. Nina is one of London's hundreds of air raid wardens who sprint, spring into action when the Nazi bombers appear. Wardens make sure that Londoners are off the streets and taking shelter whenever the air raid warning sounds. It is the perfect job for this, for this busybody who loves nothing more than bossing folk around. Oh, some more characters here. Sir Frederick Brown. Considering Frown is the Director General of London Zoo, it may come as a surprise to you that he doesn't like animals. Creatures of all shapes and sizes give him the willies. Frown is forever in fear of being slobbered over, nibbled or worst of all, peed on. So he spends most of the time hiding in the office as far away from all those dreadful beasts as possible. He is so achingly posh he speaks as if he has a plum in his mouth here's corporal batter this old soldier from the first world war is now the night watchman at london zoo batter sports a big bushy mustache and is never without his tine, his tin helmet his chest full of medals and most importantly his rifle batter has strict orders to shoot any dangerous animal that escapes from the zoo during the nighttime bombing raids. Miss Narl. This tall, broad vet at London Zoo is called whenever an animal needs to be put down. Armed with a needle full of poison, the sinister Narl adores her work. The bigger the animal, the better. She is a disturbing character who speaks only in growls. Oh dear. Here's Helen and Bertha. These mysterious elderly twin sisters run a deserted guest house at the British seaside town of Bognor Regis. The guest house, Seaview Towers, has not had a guest for years. So, what are the strange pair doing there? Perhaps their glamorous appearance hides something darker below the surface. And we've got Captain Spear. Spear is the elegant but ruthless commander of a Nazi U-boat or a submarine. The Führer, Adolf Hitler himself, the evil Nazi leader who seized power in Germany, has personally sent Spear on a top secret mission. This mission has taken the U-boat to the south coast of Britain, where it is lurking, ready to strike. If Spear succeeds, the course of the war will take a dramatic turn, making a Nazi, a Nazi victory certain. Winston Churchill The British Prime Minister is a big, balding man, always dressed immaculately in, th in a three-piece suit. Bow ties and Homburg hats. Winston Churchill is famous for his stirring speeches, his dogged determination and his fondness for brandy and cigars. He is seen by many as the only leader who can lead Britain to victory over the Nazis. And last but not least, we have Gertrude the Gorilla. She's one of the oldest animals at London Zoo. Gertrude is also the most popular. She is the zoo's star attraction. Children delight in the old ape's uh, escapades as she loves to show off for the crowds, especially for a banana or two. Gertrude loves to blow raspberries at the visitors and the gorilla has formed a special friendship with one child in particular. A short, shy boy in cracked glasses who goes by the name of Eric. There you are, boys and girls. So that you met all the characters that are going to be in the story. Which ones do you like the sound of? Which ones may you, do you think you're not going to like the sound of? Mm. 
Okay. So here's a map of London. You can see the compass here. Okay, we've got London Zoo is up over here. Here's Grandma's house. Here's Downing Street, the Houses of Parliament. We've got a power station here. Here's Sid's house, way down here in Bessie's house. He's quite a bit away from his work, isn't he? From the being a zookeeper where he works. Okay. We've got the River Thames that run through the centre of London. Let's have a look. Now this is a this is the London Zoo map. So you've got the giraffes here, the hippos the crocodiles, tigers, flamingos. Here's the main office. Oh, and here's Gertrude the gorilla. Okay, who's in the center of the zoo, isn't she? 